next question, two chemical tests are carried out on an aqueous solution of an aromatic organic compound Y. We want to use the results of these tests to identify the minimum number of carbon atoms on the aromatic compound Y. So for it to be an aromatic compound, it's got to contain a benzene ring. So let's start by drawing this out for our first part of the structure overall. Now our benzene ring contains six carbon atoms to start us off. So now let's have a look at the results of the tests in order to identify how many other carbon atoms we might need to add on. So first off, our first test is that bromine water has been decolorized. Now we know that benzene alone does not decolorize bromine water because it's not electron dense enough to induce a dipole in the bromine. So it can't react with bromine unless there is a halogen carrier. But what we do know is that phenol, which has added electron density, can decolorize bromine because it can induce a dipole and doesn't need a halogen carrier. So let's add on our OH to make this a phenol here. And this hasn't added on any other carbon atoms yet. So then for our second test, we've got some sodium carbonate aqueous, and we've been told that we've got effervescence. So for this sodium carbonate, this is a base, and for there to be effervescence, this means it's reacted with an acid of sorts. We've had an acid plus our sodium carbonate, and this will have produced a salt, water, and carbon dioxide gas, which is causing this effervescence mentioned. Now the phenol here, is only weakly acidic. So whilst it can react with sodium hydroxide, it can't react with sodium carbonate because it's not acidic enough. Therefore, in order to react with that sodium carbonate, there must be some sort of organic acid on this benzene ring. So we can add in a carboxylic acid functional group. And this adds in an additional carbon here. So we're now up to seven carbons. Therefore, our answer must be B, seven carbons, because we're looking for that minimum number overall.